Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, with, and that is to go and look at the original uh, pain point that you might have experienced in this relationship. Uh, in other words, how do you go back and get a real thorough harming? When did this originally start, if I could pinpoint anything? Well, it's very difficult to pinpoint a, a dynamic. It's very uh, difficult to pinpoint sort of what was the crossroads or, you know, where, where did things originally harm, hurt, or what could you have done instead? What could, you know, what... If, if anything could have been different and how can we go back now and use this perspective as a tool for healing and I think that's really important uh, sort of a, a great question because one of the problems with the dynamic um, with a relationship with someone who is narcissistic or psychopathic someone who has a pathological sense of self-importance coupled with a lack of empathy so these are people who will not only like do whatever is required uh to get things done they'll they'll basically run over people they will disrespect people they will do whatever is required to get things done for themselves which usually means cutting corners which means lying which means disempowering people so these people will really do anything to get themselves ahead. And they're further, further uh, explain and justify. These are the people who can rationalize anything. Uh, and, and these are the people who will use others and try to, rather than befriend, which is on an equal pattern, these are people who will constantly use others to their ends. And it's oftentimes based on what they want to see and will project rather than any reality. So when you're in a, rea in a relationship, sort of you're swept up with lack of footing and sort of where the winds of their emotional disregard sort of eliminates the, the footprints. In other words, you feel that they are a leader, but you don't really feel that there's something certain of substantial underneath. You're sort of following them as a default. In other words, this is their relationship style. Knock people off their feet and then carry them and say, oh, what a great person I am for carrying you. In other words, the initial relationship dynamic whether it was something that they said usually you know something that they did or over the course of a period of time or maybe it's so difficult to sort of if you look back and chances are you are way too practiced and way too rehearsed in looking back and trying to pinpoint any number of things that you have done wrong see this is sort of the this is sort of the ongoing perpetual motion of a relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath because of a lack of empathy. They don't want to meet you where you are. They don't have reality. Um, they have what they conjure up and create in their mind and then beset others with the role of supply. So there's a sort of feeling of in reality, although it might be a better in reality than uh, being without them or being without or not knowing. For some reason, they sort of get people to fall off their feet and sort of attend to them as more important, smarter, more intelligent, better looking, better, better all around. So these people then get a habitual, if you're with these relationships, you know, in the beginning, you're gonna be habituated which means unbeknownst to your conscious awareness, your subconscious is going to buy in 
and bet on and bang on the fact, which is an erroneous flawed thinking. So it is not based on fact, it's based on an individual who who likes control, who likes uh, to have power over others. They like to call the shots. They like to make people laugh. They like to make people be sort of what another uh, individual is. They enjoyed making you feel humiliated. So these are the people who will very much be those people who, you know, who seem like they're entertaining, but then won't give you a similar energetic validation of what you might consider real or reality. Um, and so this creation of a sub-reality or basically it's a, a world created by the narcissist needs, which has nothing to do with meeting you where you are, who you are, what you feel to be true, just your everyday, uh, you know, presence. And this can become even more pronounced when you're dealing with time, FaceTime, when this person might be texting you, uh, more than getting together or uh, giving you more important sort of the looks that they give, the corners that they cut, that they don't give you a chance, especially as it's tested out in reality. So people are very wanting to tip their toes in any other reality rather than this sort of uh, boxing ring that is created by a narcissist relationship. What is the boxing ring? It's where the, the narcissist can always be the winner. Um, they have things under control. They, they pull things in a game of players and a, grandma, uh, a game of thrones where you're never at the throne of your I am because that's where empowerment is. These people don't want others to truly, I feel, improve. They want you to get a little taste of moving forward, but not to the degree that you're not a supply for them. So this way you become really ensnared in what feels like a debilitating life. Uh, but oftentimes it's at the helm or hands of a certain crossroads, a certain way of relating that has created this sort of a gestalt, which means an op a big picture for someone, how someone defines their identity. And what other way to better know your identity than to test it, than to go out, than to do, and, and as in um, the book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Hempstetter, uh, PhD, the most important thing, the really crucial thing that you have when we talk about sort of owning up to your reality is understanding how important it is what you say when you talk to yourself. But that experience is sort of truncated, not allowed to exist in sort of an inner repertoire where you can hear, have vocalized, brought to life, brought to discussion, brought to reality, tested around people who you should trust, not people who should make fun of or use you as uh, basically relegated to an object or prop of either humiliation or entertainment or them just sort of moving the pieces around for their own ends. And it's very difficult then, as you can realize, why is it so difficult to heal these types of relationships? Shrug it off, get over it. Why don't, you know, there's 7 billion people on the earth. There's a, a, a gazillion other fish, you know, in the, in, the, in the sea for you to go after. What you don't understand is that there's an inner sense of reality, which is your I am, which is corrupted by oftentimes the very person who seems incorruptible. This person who can not ever be held accountable. Uh, this person who doesn't have accountability. 
this person who doesn't have uh, this sort of testing, reality testing at its finest, at, at, at its truest, at its true place. Instead, they won't give people a chance. They will create a reality for people or an I am basically for them that suits them. The verse is really who they are, meaning do they have a big heart? Are they caring? Are you considerate? Are you a good listener? You know, do you have the ability to create solutions, patch things up? Um, do you have these skills? Oftentimes, these were not validated. Uh, these were not then valued. So people then feeling become feeling as sort of they are exhausted and that they don't have any intrinsic value. This is a really scary, sort of flawed way of being. Uh, flawed meaning it's, it's created or put into motion by erroneous thoughts, which means flawed thoughts. So your thoughts really need to be cleaned up, um, which means you need to be number one. You need to be at the helm. You need to have the cooler car. You need to have the watch. You need to have the phone. You have the important ear. You're not trying to do and have a life to impress someone who basically doesn't check out. In other words, the narcissist and the psychopath, these are the people who motivate others to be and react according to their needs. And I'll say it again. So in other words, and then these people then are validated for behaving in a certain way that oftentimes de discredits your needs, your voice, who you are, what you're truly picking up, your I am, what you've seen with your ears, heard with your own, seen with your ears, what am I doing here? Seen with your own eyes, heard with your own ears. What I'm trying to say is you felt with your own heart, which means you have something really important going on but you can't check it out with them. They will dismiss it, they will deny it, and they will really do, they will lie through their teeth to your face so you can't have a sense of reality, real security, real relationships, real peace, real harmony. Instead, the alternate, the facade, the surrogate, the false has been made in, you know, inadvertently to be more desirable or work towards rather than your true self. So you then develop a false self, which then people mistake as the real, as a reaction, as a response, not from empowered, but more to survive, to get through, to get through. So your survival usually they, you might have had a tough fight, a tough outing, something that was difficult where your survival, your okayness, meaning your food, your shelter, uh, the, the comfort of people who knew more in life, the adults. So this feeling of being able to trust and rely oftentimes is met with swallowing certain grains of salt or be, being put into situations that were not in your best interest or where you weren't really articulated or you weren't really seen as a whole. You were less than, you were apart. We can't handle this now. We can't do, you know, let's, in other words, the, the mechanism of being constantly humiliated not good enough. I'm not going to put up with you. You better just put up and shut up. You should be so lucky. So all of these states were then accepted as the truth. Your I am deflated, which means you can't go out and test reality based on your strength. These people only know reality, which is your day to day or moment to moment life based on your weaknesses. Oh boy, talk about having a, a shabby self to come home to. Uh, and this is nothing further from the truth. 
okay? But you must realize, even though the problem, this is a big, big problem, and especially I feel now with the advent of the digital age and the TikTok and the emojis are more important than a hug, seeing your device is more important than seeing you, your series of emojis is more important than your true smile or the tear trickling down your face. You know, these devices are more, they're more articulate now than the person. And so what's becoming more and more, well, you know, this device can do it better. And, and so, and just, you know, and, and, or out of convenience, just go along. And then that out of convenience repeated is repeated again and again and again. So people then get used to accepting that their feelings, emotions, needs, and abilities are nothing but the back seat to another driver, that they are the, the back burner and that they will never live their life sort of on driving or being self-directed which is what to say when you talk to yourself. Uh, a book that I got uh, probably 10 years ago, and I'm pulling up now, is so important because it's that very act, which the, what you say to yourself, which is meaning, were you, are you served from the narcissist? You can pretty much say, were you served up a double helping of self-confidence? You can do this. Not can your car get you there? Do you have the coolest uh, oriental carpet? You know, whatever that they had made desirable. Okay, versus your presence. They're, they're, they can conflate and confuse everything. That their car, their watch, their rug, their dish towel is more important where it came from. Da, 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 da. That then, then you and your needs and saying, hey, guess what? I don't think this is right. And you're being, and it's because you don't know how to speak up and articulate because you don't even get the airspace. You don't get to get a word in or a thought or a concept in edgewise. They edge you out with their ego. Uh, that's not, you know, you're easily dismissed, easily minimized, made smaller made into the boundary, made into the sideline. Just follow me. If you, you know, and you should be as lucky. And then what if, so your people then don't have a good reality testing. So when it comes back to these initial hurt points, it's because at some point you had to buy in or bargain in and say, this person, their viewpoint is more important, more powerful, more right on, or more salient, which means more dealing with the times than, than my own. And then you had then bought into their message, which is saying you are not as important. You know, what you have to say is, you should just discard that. You should throw that away. It should just go out with the bathwater. So people get habituated to denying themselves, to ignoring their, their better pangs, ignoring their better uh, butterfly, you know, in their, in their uh, stomach. I don't think I want to live like this. I don't think that this is too difficult rather than speaking up and for wanting of seeing like a wussy or that you couldn't deal with it or you might get smacked or, or be friendless, familyless, without shelter, without food, without a job. The, the, the stakes were too high for you to check in with yourself because the narcissist doesn't really check in with you. And, and that's your, what you become known, sort of how you know yourself. In other words, I can self-direct. My, in my language, not only physically, kinesthetically, 
we're talking about a whole sort of redo of your inner language um because those it sort of ricochets the often empty cavern that sort of hasn't been lived in and people get very very afraid if they can't trust themselves uh excessive amount of fear excessive amount of anxiety if we just look at that and if you look at it from the privacy of these videos what are you really afraid at of being yelled at being given a a, a a look of being told that you don't matter being told that you're gonna go nowhere i mean so people don't even spring up from their very needs when you are with these sort of people in the proximity which just means around meaning these people are going to be louder they're going to be brighter they're going to be taller just some reason they might stand on a table they might swing a guitar around and bash it against their uh you know they might be swinging their uh, wallet around they might be swinging whatever around they're, they're showing that they're going to be louder sort of more apparent and that you are weaker as a default which means not able so they, they try to sort of create this juxtaposition of comparison which is the seed of, of judgment so people then carry this very strong self-judgment uh, which is no way to live that will eat you from the inside out it'll destroy the good things if you are on self-judgment you'll 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 begin to inherently just sort of destroy the very things that you care about if you are taught or have this sort of reverberating as part of a message that might have been received before you knew how to say that's not true. I'm not buying that. That's called empowerment, meaning coming from your I am. And you don't, the narcissist won't ever give you credit. So if you're around them for a long period of time, you will never, as a result, give credit to yourself. You'll always be, be able to maintain that relationship by always laughing at them, giving them the credit saying being supportive of them being supportive of others i'm a very good helper i don't know if I've, i have any other skills and then you know and then so you feel wobbly on your feet woozy unclear unable to focus brain fog uh you know you don't feel sharp you don't feel witty uh you know you don't feel that you have anything to say uh that you're just gonna you might as well you don't even know that you have a, a frown on your face because your resting face has been so soaked in a sourpuss reaction that you have replaying within you. It might have happened one time, but it might have been so intense, so real to you, meaning your loss of, of money, your loss of love, your loss of connection, your loss of your loss. You know, you had to cling on to then this sort of, you know, partial sense of self. And you're not able to, as part of your human anatomy, become empowered. It's a very physical, meaning because of the very physical uh, traits and symptoms that anxiety has, you're, it's, it creates a very good deal for the narcissist because they can you know, freak you out a couple times and then they'll have you under their control, which means disempowered. And then people become not up to their potential. There's something more I think that there is in life, but I just don't know what it is. I feel like I could really love someone. I feel like I could really laugh. I could really cook. I could really run a company. I could really write a book. I could really be a great spokesperson. I could be a great teacher. I could be, you know, but all of these like little wisps of optimism, of voting on the air of your strength, which means 
you know, something that you've seen and witnessed by your eyes only. And that you haven't then allowed yourself because you will live your life according to the perils of the narcissist. Which means you'll be you'll be back you'll be dancing to a, a drama of fear. You know, your the the sounds that you hear reverberating inside. Oh, I better not take that class. I better not learn a second language. I better not move. I, I better not feel good about myself. You know, I better not. I better not. Isn't it about time that I? So in the book that I'm, I'm working on, one of the important things I think that you can tell about a relationship with a narcissist is you have a big area of procrastination in your life. I mean, I'm not talking about like, I'm not doing the dishes today. Um, I'm, you know, I can't get to that right now. I'm talking about things that you have let go for way too long. You don't have the, the energy. You don't have the plan. You don't have the time. But, you know, there's, all, there's something that you have been grappling with, meaning you've been sort of, you know, trying to get, and then you can tell if you've been, you know, how can you tell if you're still living from this hurt? So it could have been, usually it's something that they're going to do, you know, the looks that could kill, um, the, you know, or, or the messages that you received. Uh, so the messages that you created weren't ever tested. In other words, you saw things go out of control or you, you know, certain things and then they said, you know, and you saw them win or you saw them get away with or you saw them advance and that you stood still. You didn't go anywhere. You weren't sort of, you didn't get the memo that you're cool enough, that you're okay, that, you know, that you are lovable and that you deserve time. You deserve to be listened to. You, de you deserve. So a lot of people didn't get a chance to full, fill their own shoes. They didn't even get a chance to even get their own shoes or go shopping for their own shoes that they could have filled. They don't get a chance to even navigate and know themselves or know their own strengths. They sure know that they've been humiliated or they sure know that they've been yelled at. And so they, they then draw or pull from all these very powerful moving situations that they are weak that they are and then they'll create experiences will that will that will then the the power of the human being okay you're not a human being doing you're not a human pleaser you're not uh just that you you are more than that so all that more that you have sort of shrouded out which means sort of shut out because you didn't take the time, because you didn't believe uh, that you could, you didn't see it, feel it, know it, or even give it enough of a chance. People then um, realize that their, their weakened states were reinforced. So you were reinforced for being humiliated. Oh, isn't that so funny? You know, when you just did this and this, or isn't that funny when you got hurt? Or isn't that funny when you failed? Or see, I told you, you would, you would fail. I told you, and then there is something in um, psychology called a self-fulfilling prophecy, where if you believe it enough, you will fulfill it. So this is, this is, um, this is a phenomenon. This is a truth. This is part of uh, of you know being a human being um, and to know that your reality means what you experience and what you allow yourself to experience and then do beyond so like looking at all that you have put off I don't have chance to have a life I don't have chance to feel strong I'm always gonna feel embarrassed uh, I'm not gonna know what to say to the opposite sex I'm gonna embarrass myself I'm gonna make a fool it's never going to work. So you talk yourself into never doing, never going, never growing, never taking the class, never exploring, never doing anything different. It's easier to walk with your head 
then you know hung down and seeing the shame then to pick it up and just say not today i'm i'm not i i am not all that it's very difficult then because people don't they're not used to being able to confront or speak with equal weight uh to a narcissist because they've built it up in their mind that person is more than or a powerful or they you control and and so to get it on the positive is to realize that you can't change the people around you which means you can't they're going to continue to they're, they're going to default to that but you can change the people who are around you meaning you can put yourself around the naysayers or you can put yourself around people who are supportive in a good space of life who have empathy who aren't um trying to uh manipulate who aren't trying to pull one over who aren't trying to devalue you through through lying i i think that's one of the the scariest things when people realize that that someone who that they looked up to um maybe it was a spouse a family member uh someone at work when you realize that they've been lying through their teeth and to you because they didn't want to validate you they didn't want to take the time it's too painful they would rather squash you out rather than reply are we really going to get married did we did you really see that great picture with of me did you see that i did that you know and you're like a little kid that's you know wanting to get chosen for the team and they're going no i didn't see you kick the ball i didn't see you hit a home run i didn't see that great picture of you i didn't hear your great joke they're gonna they're gonna basically be dismissive they're gonna invalidate they're gonna turn a deaf ear so it's just almost as if like the real positive part of you does not exist that is the fallacy that is the danger of a narcissist relationship. That's why people get so unsure of themselves. They, they procrastinate. They never go and just sort of live their life uh, by a pleasure principle. They, they're not driven by what pleases them. They're, they're sort of uh, trying to avert or go against and, 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 and try to become undetected or as flawless as can be be seen so they're afraid to be human for wanting to be too human you know um to err is human but then the narcissist me make a mistake they won't they don't ever want to have a kumbaya i mean if it's a kumbaya you're going to be talking how big their bonfire is okay um or how great their this is or they're they're, they're not ever going to get a chance so people don't even get a chance it's like the life unlived or the the song unsung so isn't it about time you know that you realized that oftentimes you're being controlled by a pain principle rather than something which pleases you so pain meaning they're they're living to avoid uh the pain rather than living to increase something positive that they can bring and take with them and be between various relationships um various job uh situations uh challenges where they're required to learn something to uh and then be learned to be able to live up to their own standards which they raise from within <clears throat> from what they they raise from within they're so interested in being able to push other buttons, other people's buttons successfully so that they can then have around them people who will always be and react according to their conditioning, their programming. The narcissist, I would say better than all, trains others to stay down, to stay silent, to stay in the background. Uh, don't challenge don't become wow this is a really you know in a lot of people oh because if i can have food shelter uh sex if i can have these things companionship 
I'll sacrifice. And isn't that in the name of love? Isn't that a higher order? Uh, isn't that uh, self-neglect? Isn't that, you know, then these people you're, they're, they're, they're then finding that, um, you know, that they're not happy or in an environment that they don't feel happy in and, and feel discontented and they don't know how to get power over it. You're not used to giving your yourself a run. You're, you're used to being defined by what you're not or someone else's opinion versus what you are, who you are, and what you've done and your true strength. So you might need to look back to, to really get to know your strengths and to know and to have, okay? Have, which means they're within you and they're not touchable meaning no one else can reach inside you and pull them out. These, this is for your eyes, your hands, your heart only, which means I have a desire. Your life is wanting things too, desiring the positive, which means a lot of people have a lot of certain things that they have procrastinated on. Um, I won't do that now. This and this is more important. It's more important for me to go according then then to do this then to make a plan then to uh change my life to get myself enrolled in a class to to read to have discipline uh it becomes difficult to have discipline and rewire and reprogram you need to have from a calm mind <clears throat> you need a calm and disciplined mind to discover who who are and what are your your true talents. So oftentimes, and I'm going back because even that state, to be calm and disciplined, <clears throat> the narcissist or your other person might not have valued that within you, your own empowered state, and then what can come of that. So you can't simultaneously, they'll, you know, or if you're so used to hearing cut downs criticisms that, you know, you won't be able to work through certain trying periods or difficulties or have the discipline and the calm first. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll be so used to. Did I get water? No, I didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's, it's really a factor of conditioning, which keeps you away from like living your empowered self. So you have to come to the calm. You have to get to the, the drawing board and be okay being self-directed, which means I'm directing what I say when I talk to myself and I will give myself a double helping of confidence, a double helping of conviction, a, a double helping of reinforcement, which means it's okay. I don't need anyone else to validate with me, but I know this to be true. So being more and more self-destructed, uh, directed. So when fear, anxiety, um, starts to come up. I don't know how to flow through this situation. I always get stuck here or take too much time or, you know, so you need to be self and I direct myself. I direct, I direct, I direct, and then direct what I say and how I feel. And I am calm and that is okay. I am safe and that is okay. I am safe and that is true. I know better and that is okay. I I know better and that is okay. I don't have to then allow the body to default to anxiety. So oftentimes fear and anxiety is like a default. It's where the body is gonna go back. You have to have then <clears throat> a sense where you, you know your alignment and you know your core of strength and you're okay working on that. Not to the point of exhaustion or to failure or to the point where you give up, but a little is enough. 
So for you to even acknowledge and validate that I have a reality, I have a drive. I am, I have, there's more to me than is being humiliated. There is much more, but that often, that state is just one little type of emotion in the whole spectrum that you should live and become. But oftentimes that one symptom, that one situation, being skinny enough, uh, being um, well shaven enough, being whatever, whatever enough that a lot of people put so much energy into that they don't even have enough energy left to be and become and to let, let it go for healing and allow and trust the process so that healing can take over and you can get some more experience under your belt, under your feet, um, that allow you to have as much say and weight as any narcissist that you have come across. And that narcissist could be as big as uh, Mick Jagger, uh, you know, who, or uh, whatever. Uh, some maybe you're who who's controlling because there's got to be someone who's put that little seed in and has allowed that seed to fester. And it's okay to say I've I've grown enough um, self humiliation in my life. I have grown enough gardens of of, of humiliation. I've, I've planted those seeds. I've been through enough seasons of that, peace and harmony. I've been through, you know, enough to where I can say, okay, I'm ready to let go. Which means you can see and feel that you don't have to resort to that state of disempowerment anymore. And instead, it returned to more of an empowerment, which means I am. And to the point where you're not going to be dragged down anymore. There's going to be a mechanism that's self-preservation that says, and anyway, and that it can cut off the weakness, fear, and anyway. Okay, so a quick pattern interrupt will be so important for you to, to, to understand. So, and, you know, here comes the heebie-jeebies, and anyway, I know better. But the narcissist doesn't know you know better. You have to be double confident. I know better. So you have to give yourself a double heaping of confidence. You have to give yourself a double heaping of reinforcement. You have to give yourself a double heaping of courage. You have to give your, yourself a double heaping of this is enough. This, this is enough. And realize where your standards are and realize that it's okay for you to live your life in a way that's new and it's going to feel different. And only you can say, I want to know what that next level is. Meaning that it's going to be, you're not going to be in the problematic pained situation, living in fear, living in doubt, living in humiliation, living in um, sorrow, regret, feeling like you're missing out feeling like that you're wasting time, that you're not, um, you know, and you have to let it go. And so we can ask ourselves now, if I wasn't holding myself back so much, I really would, I, I would really just be able to improve my, my I am if I could just spend a half an hour believing myself. Um, or, the reason why I dismiss calm and discipline is the reason why I don't value my own calm and my discipline and my own success is why don't you validate? Why don't you value? People oftentimes don't speak this to where it's audible, where you can hear it. I don't value my own progress because I don't value the next level of happiness and security because I don't know what it is. I haven't created it and I haven't um, drawn enough positive in my life or you haven't allowed yourself to see it. Where though are you pushing away? 
where have you been taught to push away, disregard, sweep aside certain B states that could result in your going to the next level? Why, you know, because why, why has, why have you refuted discipline within yourself or calm or focus or being just, you know, being in a way that perhaps doesn't serve the narcissist, perhaps maybe you would rather have a real family rather than spending your weekends um, going out drinking, drugging, waking up the next morning with a hangover. And maybe that's how the narcissist will is living their life and you choose not to. And you're afraid to choose uh, something different. I can't, you know, what's, what are you a wussy? Uh, you can't uh, hang out. What, you don't have the money? Uh, what you don't have, you know. So for some reason, people are told to dismiss certain qualities of themselves that could be very positive and endearing and redeeming and that they should adhere to and cling to instead they're they're your people are living by a disbelief of the good inherent in the self because they haven't had it mirrored back if you've been around people um or or types of jobs where you are not reinforced there's a lot of competition there's a lot of uh rule breaking there's a lot of people who want to uh get ahead who will, you know, and, and these, so these are the hurts, um, you know, but you have to come within and realize that you must be beyond compare. Stop the comparison. Stop, even though everything about, I mean, most of American life is comparison. Coke or Pepsi? Do you want the, the Ford F-150 or do you want the Tundra? Do you want, you know, this or this? There's only two when there's more than that, but um, advertisement will help you not see your true options and move forward towards really living the life that you want and being the way that you want to be. And so if you can see what, you know, what percentage of your life is spent either unhappy or feeling a deficit and to what degree is that true is that true is that true and the narcissist can re remember because they have a propensity to lie some people don't know what their truth is they have been they've been taught uh, so many lies then you might have to tweeze it out a little bit. You might have to really spend some time valuing what calm and discipline is and reaping the rewards of that. So for example, um, a lot of people, maybe they, they don't, where their life is, they're consuming uh, too much. They're consuming too much junk food, fast food, uh, too much of a certain food gr category and they're, it's out of control. It's just not normal, balanced. Well, that's where you're, you've then defaulted to, I'm not in control. Um, yes, you are. You're in control. You are in control. And the more that you can take the responsibility and get used to the feeling of that you are responsible and that's okay, then you can get into a healthy sense of responsibility and not being responsible for something that's outside of your boundaries and your standards. So being responsible for other people, being responsible for how they interact with you, uh, being responsible for what they share or don't share or treat you or don't treat you. Be willing to stand up. Stop treating me that way. I'm not interested. Sorry, I don't, that's, I don't do that. And, and get used to uh, knowing instead um, even though, you know, I've put it off for so long, what I would, how I would really love to be is, or what I would really love to have is, even though I've put it off for so long, even though I, I thought it was out of my reach, what I would really love to do, have, or be, or become, 
or work for or just have or be. You know, I would love to have a different job than get a different job. I would love to uh, have more time for relaxation out on what I would consider um, unscheduled time. Then get yourself some unscheduled time where you can just vacate and just be. You know, oftentimes people get so worked up that the reward enough is just to stop doing what you're doing. Stop the overindulgence. Stop the excessive whatever and bring it down. Dial it down. Even though I haven't tried, what I really need to dial down is. And then get some new phrases and then re repeat them over and over and over. Self-direct. What I hope to get be be better at self-direction is. And you can see it. Uh, I, I want to be more organized. I want to be more, I want, you know. So oftentimes just stopping what is problematic. People don't oftentimes give themselves the credit or feel that they have the, the power to. I really do have the power to have uh, control over this addiction. I really can make friends. I really can use a different language. I really can read a book. I really can draw a drawing. I really can uh, make a plate from ceramic. I really can build a bookcase. I really can design jewelry. I really can ask Peace and Harmony where she got her jewelry. I, I get a lot of uh, comments, you know, where do I get these necklaces? Sometimes these are gifts. Sometimes I, I get these. Uh, I'm, I'm one who really tunes into the turquoise. Uh, I like clarity. I like the bright blue. To me, that's uh, hope. To me, that's empowerment. To me, that's the divine. And to me, that's where sort of the bigger picture wants people to be is not in an overhang of clouds of unhappiness but is in the clarity of their soul and up looking and sort of optimistic and uh, full of hope but oftentimes life lived uh, sort of backwards is what people are habituated to so i want to free you up from those habits that you feel that you didn't have control over so that you can have a new lease on life uh, peace and harmony. I never thought I would uh, stop drugging. I never thought I would stop overeating. I never thought I would stop beating myself up. I've got an itchy nose. Here it comes again. So surprise yourself. Um, but people are, are oftentimes, oh, my nose itches. It's that time of year. So realize a couple things. What causes you to push away the very stage that would be beneficial for you. You can't do this. I don't believe in you. And, you know, there's a lot of sort of invalidated states. So you can prove it to yourself. I have, I am power. I have, I am power. And that's what the, um, you, you know, you have to really be consistent and keep it going. You have to live in this reality that you discipline yourself in. If you want a better reality, then let's make it together. I want a better reality, peace and harmony. A better reality to, uh, for me means, what does it mean? Better pay, uh, better da 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 da. What does a better reality mean? Get to know what it really means and stop and write it out. Better reality to me means calm and disciplined. Or better reality to me means um, I finally have security. Um, I'm, I'm no longer living my life in fear all the time. These can be some, per, you know, and then, then after that security, then I'm eating healthier. I'm wasting less. I have a cleaner home. I'm not living out of procrastination. I'm not worried uh, that my procrastination list is going to come over and engulf me like a tsunami. Instead, I, instead, I make that one little change. Instead, I, it's got to be like a two word. Instead, I, instead, I am strong. Instead, I am early. Instead, I save. Instead, I spend. Instead, I go. 
Instead, I read. Instead, I learn. Instead, I sign up. Instead, I. And you take then your shoulders around something different. Instead, I take a look at the sunrise. I eat uh, my dinner um, with the sunset. Or what other real memorable situations can you give yourself? Because you need to refill the well with new memorable situations that are then on the positive where you then you don't have to say I'm a leader you are a leader you are self-directed you are doing the do you are instead I instead of picking up the box of camels or whatever it is that you're smoking you pick up uh, some celery, you you know, and you always have uh, some celery or a carrot in your hand, or you're learning how to do a stir fry, you're learning how to calligraphy, you're learning how to paint, you're doing something where you're giving your a little bit more control over self, where you you're feeling better and you're embracing self. And so many people have gone without for so long that they have trouble fits and starts with this it's okay you know get a pack of index cards and write out i am empowered i am enough instead i instead i you know instead i and fill it in and not just and but know it now Instead, I pick up the pen and write. I pick up the paintbrush and paint. I pick up the the puzzle and I do a puzzle. What and then, but you have to get, you know, I go on the recovery date. I go on the emotions. I am calm. I do meditate. I catch the sunrise. What can you fill in? And, and instead, I, so that way you get leverage over yourself. You get power over self. And then once you do that and use it, re repeating it again and again, you'll get, you know, you'll have to realize that you'll get better with time and you'll perfect it. Instead, I, you just, you just don't say it once. Instead, I go for a walk rather than drowning my sours in a bottle of vodka. Instead, I go for a walk rather than eating a gallon of ice cream. Instead, I eat yogurt um, instead of buying 300 chocolate bars. Um, instead, I uh, read this book from front to cover um, instead of just uh, trying to uh, follow everybody else on Facebook, uh, whatever, uh, you know, trying to whatever happened to, you know, so and so. It's and getting it a, a newness to your life. I'm going to speak another language, something that you really wanted to do a position you've wanted to have and begin to go on that and adore what you adore. Don't be ashamed for liking what you like. Oftentimes people don't even know what they like because they've been humiliated so much. They've been at that crossroads of humiliation that they don't even think it's okay for them or they might have been faulted uh, for their desires. You know, you don't, you don't go and want to have this and this type of job. You're never going to. You don't, so you might have had these barriers spoken into your existence which have nothing to do with reality. So realize to acknowledge and validate what those are. And, and don't worry about others. Worry about taking care of yourself and getting what you need. And, and don't be afraid to make the, the communication clear. Because oftentimes clear communication you know, you might have gotten hit with a, a backhand. Uh, you might have gotten, last time you did that, you might have got punched in the face or you might have gotten, you know, told, I'll show you who knows, you know. In other words, you might have done that before and had a really traumatizing situation. So we need to de-traumatize um, that feeling and realize the effects that trauma has and go, okay, not, you know, not today. I'm going to put that trauma in its place and it, it's still going to be there but it, because of that trauma i'm a better stronger person i you know and and um and what helps you feel better is it calling someone out on their lies is it telling them oh you know no 
you need to realize and get you ahead where you are in resonance with your truth, where the truth that you want and the truth that you're doing are in alignment so that you feel that you're at ne your next level and you're not living in that sort of denial. Um, I'm living half a life. I'm not really happy. I'm moping along. I'm always, and one of the red flags is you're always trying to show others uh, adoration by support of them rather than being the go-to person. You think it's flattery. Oh, why don't I just always go to them? And that's the way you, so you might've had a lot of like uh, negative uh, behaviors that you learned, people pleasing behaviors that you might have learned with a narcissist where you don't know too many others. You, you know, rather than being the one with the knowledge, you might have felt that that's, you know, the narcissist or whoever had to always be the one with the knowledge, the this, the that. And so that you have a habit then of always considering someone smarter, better than having all the answers. Would have, you know, and so you, this might have been really, really wired in, hardwired through repetition and experience. So you have to have some mercy and go, whoa, okay, I realize um, why I'm at this crossroads, why I have a struggle being responsible, being disciplined, do, you know, so you can see where maybe those states were not encouraged, reinforced. Um, or actualize. So it's never too late to start. It's never too late to start. Um, and so there might be things that you wanted to do, a cuisine that you wanted to try, a museum you wanted to go to, a class that you wanted to take, or a relationship that you wanted to actualize. But you were defeated because someone has a pathological self of self-importance and a, coupled with a lack of empathy, which gives them the ability to sort of discount others, including you. There are hundreds, thousands of others who feel and need to learn these remedial skills and grow through it. So we can do that together. It's important um, that you realize, uh, especially the role that you might say victim uh, then lives within you, um, or certain words that you, uh, have, have let conquer your life. Um, be very careful that there are certain states, um, unattractive, unart inarticulate, stupid, whatever. Um, I mean, I, I have a, I have a scar on my head where I'd been you know, hit, um, into a door, you know, so like for, you know, so there, there, when I was all dressed up and ready to go skiing and I had my hair braided, I thought I looked so cute there, you know, boom, there goes my head. I'll show you who's not cute, you know, so, and knock you into the door. I'm not giving any, you know, uh, people peace and harmony. What's your story? Uh, there's a lot of fodder that I have that I share here. So if you were at like there's specific points, you know, that you might be very physically or emotionally scarred and that's okay. You experience the scars and all, um, the, you can grow and you can feel better. And so that's, um, a, a lot of it and that you will feel better and it's okay to have a small step towards feeling better. You don't have to have a marriage certificate by the end of the day. You don't have to have a new job by the end of the week. You don't have to have your whole life renovated by the end of next hour. Give yourself permission to make little steps and be okay with it. Make little steps and be okay with it. Rather than these big, huge sweeping things, you know, get used to recalibrating so that you're living the life that is really the life that is worth living, worth being, worth going after, worth, you know, being excited uh, to get up. And if you're not excited enough, then what can you do for excitement? It's about time that I got excited and write it down. Um, even just 
other things, cleared out your kitchen, get rid of a lot of the false ideas that you needed to do to impress situations that are never, you're never going to come upon. You know, get rid of some of the <clears throat> items in your life that aren't bringing you joy and really strip it clean just so you can get some momentum. Put some things in the calendar. Even if it's just a recovery date, one little ch change signals huge healing to the body. <clears throat> Better than you know. So give yourself the gift of openness and give yourself the gift of self-acknowledgement and being there for self and that, that self sort of direction and speak commands to yourself again and again and again according to the way that you want to feel be and become i am calm i am calm i am calm writing it down oh Peace and harmony. Someone said that these were backwards. Well, get your own. Go to the dollar store. Get yourself some of these for a dollar. I am calm. Write it down. I am calm. Say it. Feel it. Hear it. Teach yourself. I am calm. I am calm. I am enjoy my sense of calm. I enjoy my sense of calm. I enjoy. And then you need to sort of get your body into a biofeedback state and register the calm. I breathe deeply. I speak without stumbling on my words. I speak clearly. I enjoy speaking clearly. I enjoy speaking clearly. Okay. No matter where you are in life, there's something that you might need to change. You know, I schedule time for pleasure. I schedule time for pleasure. Instead, I. Instead of, so the, especially the self-talk, instead of self-incriminating, which means self-faulting and, and criminalizing yourself, sabotage. You know, you get, you know, it's, I mean, you, you get a new shirt and then you spill coffee. I mean, it's, these are the sort of situations. You know, you, you have a new car and you lose the keys. These are the sort of things where you really need to be there and back up for yourself. Under, and, and so, and the, I'm going to leave you with this. And please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support. So what I want you to really realize that this is done without all the glory and all, all, all the hype of some narcissist or them knowing. This is for your knowing, your feeling, your being, your self, your growth only. We're talking about we're squaring away a little place for you to put in a seed of joy, a seed of relationship. Wherever it is, you know, we're getting into the fall of the season. You know, kids are going back to school. We've been through a pandemic. We are in a pandemic. It's time to really get a new syllabus for yourself. You know, kids are, you know, Make this sort of like part of the season of your being where you can then get into and stop messing around and saying, I am going to fix this for good. This I'm going to fix for good. So I'm going to give myself a big heaping of certainty. I am certain that I am huggable. I am certain that I am lovable. I am certain that I have a heart of caring. I am certain that I am enjoyable. I'm really not enjoyable. I'm not lovable. Tweeze those out. Get those out of your, not only your vocabulary, but your sort of your, um, your physical way of feeling, being, behaving, and becoming. Allow, I, I, I remove insecurity now. I allowed it to dissipate. 
into the ether. I allow it to dissipate and allow it to go to the great thunders that roll across the globe. I allow my insecurity to go up to the great stores of the electrical bodies that shoot down bolts of lightning that set things on fire. I mean, let it go. How much longer do you want, you know, I'm going to carry it around for another month and then I'm going to let it go. I mean, begin to make it being more decisive. Even little decisions can do it. It will get you there. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and for goodness sake, please donate for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support. Please comment. Please let me know how your recovery dates are going, as well as if there's any other topics that you want to hear about on the Peach and Harmony channel. Have a beautiful day.